Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Mod Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at a new way to generate power. And this mod is called the Steam Power Systems, which is this lovely stuff I've set up over here. And for the individual blocks, we have them all laid out very neatly over on this section. So what this mod does is allow you to generate steam power to make power for your base. We also have two modded reactors which basically function as regular reactors except they've got additional functions to them where they will generate steam instead of just giving you the power and will also produce nuclear waste which can then be recycled in another reactor in order to generate steam to keep this system running. But yes, what we'll do is go through the individual blocks, have a quick look around them and then I'll show you the little setup I've done over here which is put all the blocks into use except the reactors where one of them isn't functioning and that is a mod issue and not with how it's all been set up. The other reactor is functioning but it's not producing any kind of waste but yes I'll explain that a bit later. Anyway coming all the way over to here we're going to start on the left hand side and move all the way to the right. So just bring my character all the way over, although I don't really think I needed to bring them over. So starting with these two over here, these are our steam turbines. These are responsible for turning the steam you collect or produce into power. And they can produce up to 50 megawatts of power, which is very nice. Of course we've got our standard one over here and our mirrored one. So depending on what you want to do with your base, you do have a few options. As for the model itself, and we're just coming to free camera for the moment, get a better look, we can see little pipes coming over to this section. We've got moving parts over here where we can see the turbine spinning around on the inside which is very very nice to see and it continues along over to here and then finally over towards the back we've got ourselves a pipe which is where our steam is going to be connected up and pumped into it to generate power. That's going to be the same for this one over here. It's a very very nice model. I was very surprised to see a moving part on here because you don't see it too often and yes we can get a better look on the inside of what's going on. And there we go. Wow, that's very trippy to look at it like so. There we go for all spinning around. If you were to come over to the next one, this is part of our steam generation system. This is our geothermal system. where We've got a essentially like an oil rig where we'll put this tip in the middle here as deep down as possible. That will generate heat from the core of the earth and pass up through the pipe you see over here. That will eventually reach the head, which will be above ground where you can access it. And that will then just pump it across into the pipes and go to wherever it needs to go, which will most likely be the turbines sitting right next to it. If we were to get a better look at the head itself, this is what we get. So we've got a control panel at the front where I'll bring my character all the way over. We can access this like a normal reactor. We can see what's going on with it. And of course its names and whatnot. Yes, around the side we've got these lovely yellow struts. We can see pipes galore. Now it's worth to move around the side, we've got no moving parts like the turbine, but we can see like little tanks on the side there, even more support struts. Then at the back here, here is our pipes, which is where the steam is going to come out and go to wherever it needs to go. If we look all the way down at it, that's what we get. I was to bring up the HUD and move across over to this one, this is how much it costs. Yes, I won't go through the actual components of how to build it, because it does drag out the video quite a lot, and I would just generally recommend you download the mod and play around with it yourself just to see how it all goes. But yes, the catch with this, the catch with this compared to the nuclear reactors or the little solar panels sitting next to it, is that the head needs to be at least 150 meters deep. If I was to dip the camera all the way down and look at the little thing I set up over there, you can see that's quite well down below the planet's surface, and that's generally what you want to do. It'll generate all the power down there, bring it all the way up, and of course send it across to where it needs to go. If you were to stack loads of them next to each other, it will lower the efficiency of this, so make sure you have them well spread apart. Anyway, coming across over to the tip, this is what we get with this one. So we've got a lovely wire mesh, we've got a bunch of coils. That's going to be the same all the way around. Now it's simply connect up to the pipe, which is this stuff right here. There we go. Now of course just connect up to the bottom of this all the way under there to that connection point right there. And that's how that works. If you were to move across, this is going to be our solar panel system. These are the solar concentrators, where they'll basically act like solar panels, but they'll produce steam when exposed to sunlight. And of course, they've got a little rotor next to it in case you want to use a mod to automatically adjust it to the sun's positions. So getting a better look at the solar panel itself, this is what we get. We've got a lovely shiny dish in the middle. We can see our support struts on the side there, as well as a small amount of pipes going on the top. And then underneath it, there we go, we've got a nice lot of detail with this and you can see the pipe going through the middle. That pipe will connect up to the rotor right here which has been separated to its head and its base 
which is a very nice model. That simply just gets connected onto the side right here, then you can connect it up to one of the pipes, send it across to a turbine, where it will generate power. And speaking of pipes, we've got plenty of different ones to play with. We've got a bunch of corner ones, multi-direction. We've got ones that look like our conveyor pipes. Then of course we've got these little square block ones in case you want to build it into a wall. Come across to here, you can just roll through all of them. There is quite a lot to go through and they generally cost large steel tubes. If we were to move across and now we're almost done with all these blocks, these are the nuclear reactors. So this one is the main nuclear reactor where it will take uranium and produce steam. The problem with this one is that it produces nuclear waste and you're going to need to sort a system out to get rid of it otherwise it's going to jam up the system. But we'll come back to that a bit later because you can do something with this mod without waste. And for the model itself we've got our panel at the front there to access it and control whether to turn it on and off. We've got a nice lot of pipes. On the left and right hand side we've got our big pipe connectors that will go across to our turbines or to wherever it needs to go. We've got a light on top to determine whether it's on or off. Currently it's turned off because this one doesn't currently work properly. I guess around the side onto the model. There we go. Then around towards the back there is basically the same. We've got a control panel at the bottom. Then looking down, that is where we're going to get rid of our nuclear waste or pump in uranium. We come all the way down and underneath. There we go. So there's no connection point underneath this, just on top. Now if we come over to the smaller nuclear reactor, this thing is how we're going to deal with nuclear waste. Now it can function as a regular reactor where you pump in uranium and it produces steam, but we can also use nuclear waste to produce a little bit of steam and that's one way of solving that issue. There we go, if we were to bring up this and read this little message on the side there if you can, you can see that it's less efficient but it also produces less waste and you can also consume the waste to use as fuel. There we go. Yes, it's a fairly similar model where we've got our little pipes in the middle, a control panel at the side there. If we were to move around the side, we've then got a lovely yellow strip which just means it's in standby mode. If it's red, it's off. If it's green, it's working. And all the way around over to here, it's basically the same as what we saw on the front. And over on this section, there we go. If we were to look all the way down, a nice lot of detail. And there is our conveyor point for the nuclear waste, uranium, and our pipes on the side to go off to the turbine. And then the final thing, which is going to be to store any kind of excess steam you generate to be able to make a backlog of it. In case you were to run out of uranium or nuclear waste, you can always use these, which are the steam tanks, in order to store up a bunch for later use. Come all the way across over to here. This is what they look like. They have a panel on the top and a panel on the bottom. They're fairly cheap to build and you can just stack them next to each other by alternating the ups and downs. That's what we get for the model. It's very simple and also very, very useful. And there we go. That is all the stuff we get in this mod pack. At least I think that's all the stuff. Every time I look through the menu, I keep finding new blocks. But yes, these are all the important ones of how we're going to generate the steam and how we're going to turn that steam into power. So what can we do with this? Well, what I've done is set up over here a small little system. We've got our nuclear reactors all running and we've got our geothermal system also activating, as you saw earlier, from the massive line all the way down towards the bottom here where it's going to be generating a nice lot of heat that'll be turned into steam. So just coming all the way up to here, that was a bit too far. And looking at this part right here. So this is the geothermal station where we can see our head all the way up to here. We'll use some interior walls for a small little platform at the top there. Then coming all the way down, we can see our pipe that just goes all the way down into the ground. And then we can see our piping work that comes out of the geothermal head, comes all the way down to here, moves across, and then eventually comes over to this piping right here, moves across, down and then into our steam tanks where it's going to be stored up in case we get a backlog. Now come across over to our steam turbine, which is then generating a little bit of power. Yes, over on this session, these are the reactors which have been all linked up to a large cargo container. We can see this one is on standby because it's not currently needed. So we are producing enough power with the solar panels and the geothermal system. Yes, that's all been connected up. That comes across over to a cargo container. They're both linked together. And yes, this one is sadly not working, so it's not producing any kind of waste, so I can't show you how that works. Bring my character all the way over, we'll take a look at this one right here. When come across, access the panel, we can see it's turned on, and nothing much is happening. We can come across over to here, we'll fill it up with a bit of uranium, and yes, that'll just link across over towards where it needs to go. Then as for the solar panels, I am using the solar aligning script, which is sitting on that programmable block right there, which is making these solar concentrators move around to make sure they get the maximum possible sunlight to generate as much steam as possible. 
We've got our rotor system all connecting it all together. And that is simply how it works. If I was to change the time of day, I'll show you them moving around. So we'll just go like that. There we go. You can now see the script is adjusting them to make sure they're producing the maximum amount possible. Yes, the last thing to do, of course, would be to come over to this to see how much power we are currently generating. That'll be on this little panel on the side there, where we can see our current output right here, and of course our maximum output over here, and then we are 100% filled. We can see all of our steam tanks are also 100% filled, which is why our small reactor is turned off, because it's not needed. Then we come across over to our solar concentrators, where we can see the steam output in litres per minute. Then if we were to come across over to the inventory, we'll see our geothermal system, where we can see the well tip is generating heat. That is then being pushed up to the geothermal well head, which is then converting that into steam, then go across to the turbine once again. That is pretty much it what the steam power systems has to offer. It's a lovely mod that gives you a nice alternative way of generating power. It's a very well thought out system that gives you a nice lot of unique looking blocks to spice up your base. And to me, it's a lot more fun than using hydrogen or solar panels, or even just using a boring old reactor. I'm not too keen on these reactors right here, but that just might be because they're not generating properly. But I do love this over here. This is my favourite system, just because of how you can set it up and just how it looks. Yes, as I said, there's not too much else to talk about. I'm pretty sure I covered everything. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download it and play around for yourself. Highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another video somewhat soon. Bye bye.